In a sign of much larger problems ahead, House Republicans today withdrew their potential plan to fund the government. The conference is divided and struggling to agree, with only 11 full days remaining until most agencies would be forced to shut down. Congressional correspondent Lisa Desjardins has been at the Capitol today and joins me here in the studio. Lisa, great to see you. Good to see you. So the clock is ticking. You've been talking to all your sources. Just bring us up to speed. Where do things stand right now? Okay. <laughs> We've all been through this game before, right? And I have to say, I'm usually an optimist. I'm also usually very leery uh, of this situation because by the end, we know these lawmakers have ways of figuring this out by the deadline. But um, I have to say, given the dynamics that we know, given the conversations I'm having on Capitol Hill, we are hurling toward a government shutdown. Something dramatic has to change to avoid one. Now, this is based on initially some very substantive issues, primarily that House Republicans are concerned about spending and the growth of the national debt ahead. They want to curb spending. Mm -hmm. That's the actual easy part. It's hard, but it's the easy part here because Republicans then can't agree amongst themselves over how to do that. Let's just look at a list of the things that House Republicans can't agree on amongst themselves that I heard about today. One, the size and shape of those spending cuts. Two, Ukraine funding, that's something we talk a lot about on this show. Big divide over whether Ukraine should get more money. Immigration, border policy, also what to do there, and the shutdown itself. There are some Republicans, Amna, who believe a shutdown could be a good thing, believe it or not. They think that it would force the issue about spending and the national debt. They are the minority. But there are others who say, no, that's ridiculous. We shouldn't be going toward a shutdown. But the idea that there are Republicans like that is adding to this dynamic and really increasing the chances of us having a shutdown. One on the other side of that are moderate Republicans who say, listen, folks, this is out of control. Here's Mike Lawler of New York. We're in a divided government, right? You have a Democrat-controlled Senate. You have a Democrat in the White House. Of course you're going to need Democrats. And anybody who thinks otherwise is lying to the American people. Tonight, the House Republicans also could not even pass a rule on the House floor, which is a major defeat for them. Uh, Kevin McCarthy is meeting in small groups with everyone to try and work this out. Lisa, given all the struggle seems to be within one conference here, then what are what are the off-ramps? I mean, how, how did they avoid a shutdown at this stage? It's the same off-ramp as we always see. There needs to be a short-term funding bill. And, you know, Republicans are trying to come up with one, but as long as they can't agree on one, then the other way to go is to peel off a few Democrats, maybe bring together moderate Democrats and Republicans to come up with an easy, simple, classic, just fun government for a few weeks. Problem there, Democrats are very unhappy with Republicans over the impeachment inquiry they launched, launched last week. Don't trust them. Republicans also, now many of them think being bipartisan means you're not conservative enough. So these dangerous rifts in our kind of culture and political uh, sensibilities here in this country are now hitting full force. If you're a government worker, if you're planning a trip to a national park, I'm sorry to tell you that you really should be watching this because we could have a shutdown soon. Lisa Desjardins covering this incredibly important story, talking to everyone at the heart of it. Lisa, thanks for your reporting. You're welcome. Let's hear now from one of the Republicans who say they will not support the current deal to fund the government. Joining me from the Capitol is South Carolina Congressman Ralph Norman, a member of the House Freedom Caucus. Congressman, welcome and thanks for joining us. Glad to be with you. So how likely is a shutdown right now, in your view? It's uh, 100%. And are you comfortable with that? Well, I'm, I mean, a shutdown is not is not the best thing in the world, but continued bank continued continued path toward bankruptcy is not uh, an option either for me. Uh, it was put in perspective at a caucus meeting today when one of our members said he had calculated that the debt every second is twenty thousand dollars every second, and I'm just not. It's not business as usual. Economic security is national security. Uh, in a perfect world, we would agree on everything and have bipartisan support, but that's just not the case. So it's up to us, to, we're in the majority by a slim margin, to figure it out and come up with a budget that gets us on a downward trajectory. That's what we agreed to in January, a 10-year budget, <clears throat> which we will have, uh, and other things. But this isn't an easy process. When it comes to money, there's an advocate for every dollar, and so it's not easy, but it's part of the reason that um, we're elected to this office to, to make the decisions. 
What about a, a stopgap funding measure, a short-term funding bill? I know some of your Freedom Caucus colleagues were part of a group that worked out a potential deal. You don't support that, I understand, but what would you support? What I would support would be leadership agreeing to a top-line number. We had put on paper on uh, July 10th a 1.471. I met with the speaker today, and he is, to his credit, has been open to talks, but we need a top-line number that the 12 appropriation bills won't go over. One of the agreements in January was to operate a regular order, which would mean for the 12 approved bills to be hammered out in June and July. That just didn't happen, for whatever reason. We are where we are. Can I ask you about that top line number, though? Do I understand correctly when you say you won't agree to anything unless it has that top line number of 1.471? Is that right? I need a, that's the number we've given him. I, we need a number. We're not going into this thing blindly, giving a blank check. We, we were burned, and I, I've told the speaker this, on the debt ceiling, to give this sitting president a carte blanche uh, free blank check uh, on the spending limit to January of 2025. You just don't do that. So uh, that's why we need to secure, need the safeguards of a number that he's going to go to work and get as he did with the speaker vote. He didn't have 218. We've almost put the cart before the horse in that instead of working on each of the probes bills to cut the things that we know aren't good for the country or in, in the Republicans' opinion, and uh, get a consensus on it. But you got to work at it. You got to go line item by line item. I'm ready to do that. Congressman, it's really striking to hear you say it's a 100% chance of going to a government <coughs> shutdown now because we are just now in this country digging out of the hole from COVID and the, the hit that the economy took. But inflation is coming down, unemployment is at historic lows. Why risk damaging the economy further with a shutdown? Why risk borrowing more money at $20,000 a second that's going to add to the $32 trillion debt? But you do agree uh, that a shutdown would also harm the economy, correct? Well, uh, it harmed the economy when the government shut the businesses down for a, a virus. It harmed the economy when children couldn't go to school and they took them out of school for the length of time they did. And uh, the, the government's going to have to go on a diet. And a shutdown, if it happens, and I think it will, uh, it will encourage everybody to come up, particularly the Republicans, I don't think we'll have much bipartisan support. The answer the Democrats continue to give, which is, uh, which is bizarre, is more taxes and more spending. I'm just not going along. I'm not using my vote to go along with that. So a shutdown is, is going to be the result of, I guess, waiting to the last minute. As you saw, Mr. McCarthy dared the Freedom Caucus to basically try and remove him from the speakership if you wanted to, and, and you didn't. So is that threat to remove him sort of an empty one at this point? Well, you've had one member mention that. It's, it's not an empty point. I mean, it's always out there. Who's to say that, you know, if we don't move anything else, what's going to happen? The motion to vacate, the reason we fought to keep that in again in January is because you know, anybody, if you're not doing the job in the private sector, you don't keep your job. Kevin's done some good things, but now spending, spending is the cancer in this country, and he's going to have to focus on it, and hopefully he will. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there with, you know, what I vote for a motion to vacate, what I'm not. I'm just saying, let's get the job on the economy going, let's get the spending under control, and then let's move this country forward. As you know, the Republicans' plan does not include additional funding for Ukraine and its war and defending itself from Russia. You saw Mr. Biden, President Biden at the UNGA today say the U.S. is going to continue to stand with Ukraine. Are you worried that calling that funding into question emboldens Russia and its war in Ukraine? What I, what I worry about is this president not having any offsets. If he, was, if he were sincerely um, legitimate in saying he wanted to fund Ukraine, cut something on some of these programs that the Green New Deal, as an example, uh, the funding for uh, borders in foreign countries, uh, the six trillion that he gave Iran. Where is that coming from? What's, what's Iran? Why does Iran, who will blow, would would prefer to, to blow this country off the map? Why does it deserve six trillion that this sitting president gave? Congressman, I think. So, do you mean the the money that just came as a result of the hostage negotiations? 
Yes. So that was $6 billion, and those were not U.S. taxpayer funds. Those were frozen Iranian funds that South Korea was holding in a restricted account. I understand account. all that. It's still money, though, that he agreed to give away, and as he's doing in every agency that he's under control. Look at the executive orders that he's had that have had dollar bills attached to them. The point is this. Uh, if he was serious about it, let's examine the budget. With two tr this uh, year, we're going to be $2 trillion, run a $2 trillion deficit. That's not fair to the American people. I will argue that all day long. If you're comfortable with that, then and to add that to the existing debt, I just don't subscribe to that theory. Before I let you go, I have to ask, last week you said you're considering running against Senator Lindsey Graham in 2026, that you haven't made a decision yet. But I wonder, why is it you believe he could be vulnerable in 2026? Well, Lindsey has all, and I like Lindsey, but you get two different Lindseys. Uh, in a six-year term, the first four years, he votes with Mitt Romney. Uh, he votes to spin this country into oblivion. The last two years, he's very conservative. And Lindsey uh, has got a big war chest, and an hour in politics is a long time. 2026 is a long way off. But uh, yes, I was asked by the press what I considered, and yes, I will, because I'm frustrated with his votes and just non-participation in getting this country back on a firm financial footing. That is South Carolina Congressman Ralph Norman, a member of the House Freedom Caucus, joining us tonight. Congressman, thank you. It's good to see you. My pleasure.